My name is Trinity Grace. I wanted to do a little review of a book that I have had so much fun reading over the past week and a half. It is called The Letter for the King by Tonk Tract. I don't know how to say their name. I will pronounce it correctly and put a little clip of me doing it here. All right, so I wanted to talk about this book because it's so good. Oh my gosh, so this is the book. Um, yeah, this is the book. It's called The Letter for the King. This is the hardback version. And the cool thing about this book is that it was originally published not in English. They read in the back, there's a little note about it. The author is a woman, which is really cool. Um, Miss Drack was born in Jakarta in 1930 and spent most of her childhood in Indonesia. When she was 12, she was interned in a camp run by the Japanese occupiers, where she wrote with her friend her very first book using begged and borrowed paper. Her family moved to the Netherlands, Netherlands after the war, and after studying at the Royal Academy of Art in The Hague, Drag became an art teacher. She published her book, first book in 1961, followed a year later by The Letter for the King, which won the Children's Book of the Year Award and has been translated into 16 languages. Drat was awarded the Straight Prize for Youth Literature in 1976 and was knighted in 2001. That's pretty cool to me. I want to be knighted. Um, and so then our translator was named Miss Laura Watkinson. She studied medieval and modern languages at Oxford, taught English around the world before returning to the UK to take a master's in English and applied linguistics, and got a postgraduate certificate in literary translation. She is now a full-time translator from Dutch, Italian, and German. She lives in Amsterdam. In 2012, her translation of B.B. Dumont's Tax Soldier Boyer won the American Library Associate Mildred L. Batchelder Award for the year's most outstanding children's book net in translation. Um, it doesn't tell us too much about them. It tells us some stuff, but yeah, so this book um, was originally written and published way back. It was only, from my understanding, it was only recently translated to English, which is the language I'm reading it in. I think around 2015, if my facts are incorrect, I'll correct them. All right. So I just wanted to talk about this book. So I was, I haven't, so I went to my local library um, about a couple weeks ago and I was like really on the hunt for something invigorating to read and I had no idea what special little gem I came upon when I saw this book. And I really love the color yellow, among other things. And they say don't judge a book by its cover, but absolutely do after you've read the summary in a little bit at least. So this is the cover and it really grab my eye when I found it and uh this is the summary a young messenger a secret mission a kingdom in peril he could still hear noises on the other side of the door had the entire company of gray knights and their squires gathered outside the room Tiori took the letter from beneath the tablecloth and thought frantically he needed to read the letter and destroy it, but how? If only there was a fire in the room. He was going to have to tear the letter into a thousand tiny pieces and swallow them if necessary, but first he had to read it. And quickly, he broke the second seal. I need to commit the message to memory, he thought, but what if someone comes? Then it's all over. Boom, let's read the other story. Summary. In the dead of night, 16 year old Tiori must spend hours locked in the chapel in silent contemplation if he is to be knighted in the next day. But as he waits by the light of a flickering candle, he hears a knock at the door and a voice desperately asking for help. A secret letter must be delivered to King Unuin across the great mountains, a letter upon which the fate of the entire kingdom depends. Tiori has a vital role to play, one that might cost him his knighthood. Tiori's journey will take him through dark, menacing forests, across treacherous rivers, to sinister castles, and strange cities. 
he will encounter evil enemies who would kill to get the letter, but also the best of friends in the most unexpected places. He must trust no one. He must keep his true identity secret, and above all, he must never reveal what is in the letter. The Letter for the King is a thrilling story of one boy's battle against evil, set in an enchanted world of chivalry, courage, and true friendship. Okay, so right off the bat, that's one of the things I love about this book. So this book starts out with the 16-year-old boy, Tiori, and some of his peers, um, and they're doing an overnight vigil in a chapel the night before they're going to be crowned or knighted as knights rather and part of the, there's some rules to that vigil and that they're not allowed to talk they're not allowed to leave the chapel and uh there's no eating or drinking it's like a complete fast and um if they break any of those rules before the king's men comes and uh collects them at seven o'clock the next morning they won't be knighted so this is where the conflict of Tiori's adventure starts so he's known as the son of Tiori the Valiant. Tiori, his father, is a knight in the kingdom of Dagonaut. I think that's how you say it. And um, so Tiori kind of has a bit of a reputation to uphold. But while he's in the chapel in the middle of the night, and all of them are being quiet in the dark, he hears a voice calling to him through the window. And he thinks maybe he's just imagining it maybe it's not there but it keeps happening and urgently beckons for help urges him urges urges him for help literally in the name of the lord jesus which is super cool because as a christian i love the lord so super duper 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 neat that this plays a part in the series um events in this book and uh teori being unable to not help to answer the call even knowing that it's going to risk everything he's worked for all of his life to become a knight hears that somebody needs help and he's going to help them he's like so selfless in it and he has no idea what he's going getting himself into well it starts the whole adventure not across just one kingdom but two over mountains and valleys and ravines in prisons and out of prisons in multiple places, medieval cities, the good, the bad, all sorts of wonderful things. And it's just such a good book. And I like, I like, I, like I can't, I don't want to spoil it, but it's so good. I've been so happily reading it. And I just finished it this morning. And all at once was like, so like, satisfied with every single part of it and at the same time saddened that it was over because it's such a good story thankfully the author excuse me wrote a sequel that has been translated into english by now so i immediately bought that book and honestly all the other ones by her that are that have english translations because i'm such a huge fan of this writing that she's done that I was like, dude, I just want to like own everything she's made so I can just read it and put it in my personal library for my kids one day. And yeah, so I would like some points that I really loved about this book. I loved the theme of Christianity. There is a true theme of a love for the Lord Jesus and how he encourages us to act in the ways that he encourages us to act is in is like in picture of his character which is selfless love selfless love unconditional forgiveness not like to the point of harming ourselves but hating the sin and not the sinner hating what you know what i mean like i can't explain it there's just so much chivalry in this book where these knights even though there's this conflict of enemies and betrayal and all of these things going on they still uphold a level of honor and integrity that's extremely important to them and it's one that really I wish still existed in today's world because I think there'd be a lot more peace among men if we had such a strong 
moral system and code that we followed universally, largely as a whole. Um, alas, this book is a nice picture into what that world was slash could have been in the past. And it's awesome. It has really cool horses, really cool characters. Like, I just can't get over it. Tiori is absolutely awesome. He's like a simple... He's like, what I love about his character is like, he's so human. He's so simply human. He's a 16 year old boy determined to fulfill this mission that he has no idea what the purpose is going to serve besides that he promised to help somebody and gave up all of his knighthood, everything he's worked for, to help somebody who asked for help. And he does, and he like so much awesome stuff along the way. I'm not really selling it that well, but I'm telling you, you should read it. Read it to your kids. It's super good. I literally couldn't put it down. It was so hard for me to exercise self-control and not um, like skip to future sections in the book to see what would happen because I was just like, oh, it was so enthralling. He just wanted to know everything. But yeah, I love this book. I love the character Tiori. I love like there's the true growth that he goes through throughout the story. Everything feels very natural. None of it is forced. And like I ha kept getting surprised in so many wonderful ways. Like you think you might know the plot that's going to happen or something and you don't. And you're just so pleasantly surprised. The author is incredibly creative and well written. And I just, she did absolutely what she intended to do, which was sweep me away into this adventure with Tiori. And the letter he's delivering for the king, King Unwin, and it's just so good. Like, I really literally just want to reread it already, but I really just wanted to make a little, short little blurb. Um, that's totally off the top of my head about why you should read it and it's all the reasons I said and all the reasons I didn't say um, But it's a wonderful read. It's beautiful. It's not overly complex Like everybody compares anything fantasy or adventure to Lord of the Rings Which I understand and I do enjoy Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings is a prose that's like There's like two sides to it to me a part of it is needlessly complex and uh dense and then there's this other part of it where it's just like on the other hand it's very poetic and intelligent it's something that you sit and you meditate on and study so it serves a purpose but sometimes if you want a story that's wonderful just as good and just super exciting and all the good things but without hurting your brain reading it this is a great book which isn't to say that it isn't written intelligently, because it definitely, definitely is. And you can tell beautiful research was done into it. And it just amazes me that it was written in the time frame that it was written in. Like in the 1960s, and written about knights and stuff. And written by a woman, because it was just so... There's just so much grace, like greatness to it. I appreciate that. You know, there's no untoward, undue sexuality lust or anything like that like this is an adventure story from start to finish and you learn so much and i've learned so much just from reading it and so many wise tidbits and really fall in love with the cast and the characters and yeah i will let you know what i think of the next book in the series to the secrets of the wildwood once i get it and i read it i pray that you guys have the most wonderful week and let you pick up for yourself your own copy of the letter for the king if you get the chance. But it's definitely worth the read. I would like, I think it's illegal, but if it wasn't, I would definitely love to like narrate the audiobook and put it on YouTube or something. But yeah, again, my name is Trinity Grace. I guess I'll just be doing whatever I feel like. You know, I want to do book reviews and uh, talk about random stuff, Bible studies. So yeah, I pray that you guys... Check the book out. Go to your local library. Get a library card. If you're in America, I'm pretty sure it's free across the states. My library, you can get, in my state, I can get 50 books at once. Which is crazy. They just told me that. And I was like, 
50 bucks. And they were like, yo. And I was like, dude, that's nuts. And they told me about um, this family that came in. I told them that they don't have phones, they don't have internet, they don't have a TV. They just read books. Like, I'm sure they have phones to like text and call, but they don't have smartphones. And they checked out all 50 books that they could max both parents, mom and dad, between them and their two children. And I was like, that is so awesome. And I'm also kind of like, what books did you guys check out? Because I don't want to read everything. Y'all better finish it quick, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> sniff, sniff. But, yeah. Read the book. It's a good one. The colors are nice. Oh, and it's got awesome illustrations. That's another thing I can't believe I forgot. It's got these really nice illustrations. And I think, I'm assuming it must be illustrated by Miss Drat. Because there's no illustration credits otherwise. But I, all of her books seem to be illustrated in a similar style. And this book is divided into like parts, part one, two, three, four. And parts never seem to go beyond like six or seven chapters. Um, let me see if I can find another good illustration. Like this just makes you want to read it. Like I just love these types of stories. I love knights, I love chivalry, I love kindness. I love adventure and I love doing the right thing even when nobody else sees it. Even when doing the right thing means people think badly of you and they don't understand because they may never understand. But when you're doing the right thing by God and you know it's what he's told you to do and you know it honors and glorifies him and his love for you and you share that love through what you're doing in his name, it's more than worth it. And the loving reward that he will give you in heaven and here on earth is more than you could have ever asked for and imagined. So on that note, my friends, pray that you have a blessed time, a blessed week, a blessed month, a blessed year, whenever it happens to be that you see this and that if you read this book or you've read it before, let me know what some of your favorite parts were. Please be courteous. I tried to do no spoilers in this video, so if you are going to say something that has a spoiler, please make sure you mention it. Um, and try to put it under a toggle where it won't be seen automatically by others. That way they can enjoy the book without it being spoiled. Thank you guys very much. May the Lord bless you, he keep, bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our brother, our husband, our comforter, and our friend. God bless you and his Holy Spirit be with you. Amen.